like shit Niggas left me banished from my grandma house They ain't want no dealings with me Still keep them feelings with me Outsider, playing with them sticks like a campfire rejection Had to use anger as protection Watch my mama get her ass beat Then go project that I was raised a little different than the ordinary Fascinated with them pots and pans like it's culinary Pops and shot so many gunshots Now ain't hard to hear this is As Late Podcast. It's your boy Titus, and we got Tony O the Great with yeah. us. What's what good, it, my dog? What it do, baby? What's good, man? <laughs> What's good, man? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you, my for brother. For sure, man. Happy to be here, dog. Thank you for coming, man. Thank for you sure. for coming. How you feeling, man? How's I going? feel good, man. This is uh, it's long overdue. It's something we've been talked about. So, yeah, yeah, uh, man, yeah. Hit me up. Dagon was like, yo, what's good? I'm being in the city. I was like, yo, bro, say less. I'll do this for you. <laughs> See what I did there? Up. See what I for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll open up that door later for the, for the people that may or may not know. You know, Tony, yo, just dropped the daggone EP on y'all. Facts. Mr. Level Lover, I call him now. You know, for you, you know, by him. You know, no FUBU intended with LL, but he's still a lover boy. Cool Facts. with the ladies, so. Facts. How you feeling, man? How you feeling out here? Man, I feel great, dog, man. Everything doing what it's supposed to do, going where it's supposed to go, so. Lining up right for you. Yeah, man. man. God work, God speed. That's for sure. I like that. I like for that. Sure, I might have man. to use that. Like, take, <laughs> take that one down. God, yeah. God what'd you say? God, God what? God, God speed. God work, God speed. God work, God speed. You might yeah. need to trademark that, bro. Hey, yeah. I Where am. That from? Hey, Y'all better. Not do. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that on the shirt, bro. Like, nah, for real. For real. Yeah, that's that's good, yeah. Because that's that's the way you got to do it. You know, God work and how He's moving in your life, and then the same thing that I'm battling now is God speed. Facts. You know? Some things you cannot control. You that's know, you a just fact. gotta give it to God and be patient in His time, His speed. And as you as you see, um, from my own personal experiences, anyway, you can only give people the experiences of yourself as a man or as a woman. Um, it works itself out in due time. That's a fact. Just being patient. Um, you being an artist, I feel like that can be, because it sounds like from just the, the talking that we've done um, just today um, before recording, you've been doing this thing for a minute, man. You on you on your Bow Wow type stuff, bro. Like, yeah. you've been doing this since you were like a little one. I didn't, I didn't know all of that. Um, does that play a factor in battling that, though? You know, having that patience and really giving it all to God because... Is, I mean, you can consider yourself with, with the timeline of, like, um, even if someone is just n noticing you for the first time for this EP that you're doing for you, yeah. you've been building this up for a minute. Facts. Um, where patience has to play a factor in certain things. Like, Man, um, patience be everything, honestly. Like, but I can say this. With me, I just realized that, yeah, be patient, but work in the meantime. And it, like... What we was talking about earlier, I, I was doing music from ages 10 to 13 mm -hmm. and won the Carolina Music Awards for Best Hip Hop Group twice. Mm -hmm. Did like tours. We done opened up for any, damn near anybody you can think of mm -hmm. in those in those couple of years. Power 98, we got songs played on the radio. All, like anything you can think of, we did. State to state, North Carolina, South Carolina, to Florida, to Atlanta, to New York. Virginia, all we was literally everywhere in that three, two and a half, three year span. And we was my mama always told us be patient. Mm -hmm. But she taught us like in the meantime of us being patient, you gotta work. Everything gonna open up. Is you know what I'm saying? Gotta work. And now that, you know, I'm I'm locked in or whatever, like it's the same thing, like the 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 stuff I done seen in this amount of time. The progression I done seen in this amount of time only been because of God and my work ethic, bro. Like, but at the same time, like I'm talking about patience, like being patient enough to be like, all right, we're gonna put solid projects together. We ain't just gonna throw no BS out there. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So key. Yeah, like we're gonna we gonna throw this out there. We got a plan, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna go against the grain of what's working right now. We just you gotta have patience for that because everybody else just see Everybody winning, doing the same things. But I don't want to just be here today. I don't want to be here tomorrow or next month. I'm trying to be here 10 years from now, 15 years from now. The Rick Ross effect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he, Rick Ross been around for a long time, and yeah. people don't know that. Like, mm -hmm. he been doing this since 95. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, yeah. like, that's the, that's the type of legacy 
to where it's like I, I can't lose no matter what I do. I can't lose. So that's that's yeah. You gotta have patience for that though. Yeah, you gotta have patience for it for sure. Yeah, you got to you gotta have patience because if not, um, you have those occasions and and we all have. I feel like that's that is the battle of being a human is dealing, especially a human in the Western world. Um, is battling patience. Facts. It's, it's, it's keeping your eyes on the prize and being in tunnel vision when everybody is going left. That's a fact. You know, because in, in today's day and age, it's so easily, um, you know, or you can get so easily distracted. That's you know, a fact. With, with social media, you know, it's it's pros and cons what comes with that. You know, it's a beautiful outlet to where you can put your music out there and uh, you can connect with the fans and Facts. you know do like how you do with the lives and talk to people from like North Carolina, yeah. Florida. You know, people that's connecting with you. So it's it's beauty in that. But then at the same time, underneath the surface can be so rotten. Facts. Where it can make someone go completely lose their own identity. I see it all the time. Where a lot of people, because of the lack of patience and relying too much on what fads do, Facts. they'll lose their momentum. They'll, they'll mess around, lose their momentum, and, and, and never be the same for it. So patience is very key. Patience, patience is very key in sticking to your what you see as your vision as well. Facts. You know, Because everybody ain't going to see it. Everybody ain't going to see what you have in store for yourself. Um, but I feel like that's for the reason of you. You know, you're supposed to see it. Yep. You know? I used to hate that. You know, I used to be like, man, like, why y'all don't see it? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's in yeah. your D, it's in our DNA. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to be like, dang, man, why? The, like, does that come across you? I, I know, like, throughout this time, you yeah, you'll see visions yeah. be like, man, like, they just don't get it, bro. Yeah. Like, hey, bro, man, listen, especially being, being from where a lot of us from, everything is looked at, it got to be one way. Mm. I've never, I never looked at it like that because of my mama, like, and I'm a, I'll probably say that a million times, bro, because my mama is the reason why I view things the way that I do. Like, mm. I kind of think outside of, not kind of, I think outside of the box. Gotcha. She's part of the a lot, foundation. But yeah, because even though she was raised how she was raised, she still, I don't know where she got it from, but she always had that mindset. Dress different, act different, talk different. This is how, you know what I'm saying? Like, so my approach to the music is like, all right, yeah, cool. I see what y'all doing, mm. but... I ain't just looking at these type of artists that we talking about where we from. I'm looking at the 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 Nellies, the Jason Derulos. I'm looking at the Flow Riders. I'm looking at all these people because these people are some of the most highest selling artists in history to date. To date, but we're not talking about that when we go back to you know certain environments. Mm -hmm. We listen to these these artists right here. Yeah, they might sell a few couple hundred thousand records. In their whole career, we won't be talking about them next year. We won't be talking about them five years from now. It'll be somebody else's replacing that. Yeah. I'm looking at that other side, like where you can go. Bro, I just, I, I was just in Atlanta and Jason Derulo was at, uh, he was at a military base performing for, performing for all of them. Yeah. You know what type of chicken that is? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's it. You know what I'm saying? The bag is there. Yeah, that's yeah. the real, you know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. the real bag. That's that that bag that makes your mom and makes your pops and siblings and everybody taken care of forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that generational that, wealth. Yeah, that's generational wealth. When they, when they start calling, that's different. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I be, that's where my mind be at most of the time. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's I mean that's beautiful to hear, man. Because you can you can like I said in the society that we're in now, you can get so off track. And I think the foundation is key to like what you said. You mentioned your mom. Um, you know, like we'll, we'll get a little bit more into that because you know I I would love to know like the backstory of you aside from like like I said I didn't know you had that connection with Carolina. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were based really like you know ATL. Yeah, yeah. And so like tell us about like how like how you grew up like. I know you have the sister, of course. Yeah. Like, are you is y'all the only two siblings? Like, what nah. did y'all what did y'all grow up in? Like, was it in Georgia? Was it in North Carolina? Then I moved to Georgia. So I so we grew up everywhere. Like, military family or y'all? Nah, just, we were just really poor, poverty. You know what I'm saying? Poverty. We just had to do what we had to do. Yeah. Um, whether it be couch hopping, hotel hopping, house hopping, whatever we got to do. You know what I'm saying? Uh. The opportunity is better. You know what I'm saying? Something that's going to help my mama get off her feet, we got to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was that type of thing. So I went to a different school every year. You know what I'm saying? So I went to, in Charlotte, I went to elementary-wise, I went to uh, Broadwood, 
I went to Oakhurst. I went to okay. uh, 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 man, what school is that off? It's like off Independence Green. Uh, I forget the name of that school. But I, man, I went to a whole bunch of elementary schools in yeah, North Carolina. I don't know what you're talking about. It's off of Independence, going towards Monroe. Yeah, Monroe yeah, yeah, Road. yeah. So, I, man, North Carolina, uh, well, Charlotte, Shelby, uh, Atlanta. So I went to elementary and all of those places. Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Mm. Um, then middle yeah, school. Below. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in Columbus, Ohio for like two and a half, three years, and I hated it. Mm. But uh, I learned a lot up there, though. I learned a lot for sure. Um, middle schools, Charlotte wise, I went to uh, MLK, uh, McClintock, Cochran, okay. Eastway. Oh, okay, boy, you were all um, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All around I was everywhere. Um, high Ooh. school wise, I went to, uh, I went to Garinger for a tad bit. I'm hearing a lot of East Side going on out here. It's a, it's a yeah, lot, and lot it, of East Side. And I mean, it's crazy. I, I'm loving it. You know, I don't it's crazy because I'm not. I'm not even from the East Side though. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. You just but name like McClintock. Yeah. yeah. Eastway. Eastway. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Those, are, those are some Eastway. You know, those are middle schools going around the East Side. Even Garinger. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Garinger was funny as hell. I went to Butler for a tad bit. I went okay. to. Uh, uh, I went to Dorada. I went to. Uh, it was another alternative school okay, I yeah, went you to. Bad. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I man, I stayed in so much trouble. Like, yeah. I got kicked out of Butler. It started off like I got suspended, and that first semester I had already missed like things like I think I missed sixty seven days or something like that. Mm. First semester, and then I got expelled. And then once I got kicked out of there, they sent me to this. Uh, it was like a kind of like a juvie alternative school. Mm -hmm. So I was there for a little minute. Um, I actually loved it there. We just played basketball. No, that was the first alternative school I went to that I love. It was cool because it was like a rehabilitation program type mm, thing. Okay, trying the, to get your mind back. Yeah, right. the the next one I went to, I ain't like, I ain't, mm. I ain't like that shit. That yeah. shit was like a military. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I did that. Then I got uh sent to some. It was another alternative school I got sent to. Went to uh Fort Mill High School. Oh wow, you were out there. Yeah, went up there, and that was based off an of opportunity that my mama got because football. Nah, I, you know, the crazy thing, I wasn't playing football until, like, I ain't played until my senior year of high school. Okay. I wouldn't, because I was in so much trouble, I wouldn't think about it. Didn't no have football. the time to really, like, settle in yeah, on the team and stuff. Yeah, and everybody kept saying, man, you going to play football? You going to play football? I wasn't thinking about football, bro. Like, I was, we thinking about, man, where we going to sleep? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. What we going to eat? Like, what the fuck we got going on? How we going to get from here to there? You know what I'm saying? So. Bigger things to worry about. Yeah. I was trying to drop out. Mm. I was trying to drop out after freshman year. Only reason I didn't was just because my mom was like, hell nah, like, we ain't. Go ahead and finish this. Yeah, like, it, mine, Keisha, matter of fact, Keisha Vincent, um, I was telling her the same thing. I remember her, we was at an apartment, and it was me, her, my mama, somebody else in the front room, and I was telling her, like, yo, I'm trying to drop out, man. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, do this, and I'm trying to do that. Mm. And she just looked at me, and she's just like, you got to be the dumbest motherfucking <laughs> And I'm like, nah, for real. Like, I ain't, yeah. I ain't got time for this. Yeah. She's like, man, you better not drop out. And I just remember her saying that. And I'm like, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to drop out. But, yeah, I was, man, I was everywhere, bro. Mm. Everywhere. So where did you end up graduating? Fort Mill. Fort Mill. So okay. I did my last year at Fort Mill High School, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, honestly, Fort Mill changed the trajectory, the trajectory of my life, like, Cause before then I was I was gung ho on a lot of shit like I was tripping, bro. <laughs> I was tripping, bro. But so I'm gonna do what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. With that, um, you did a lot of traveling, um, going even from state to state. Um, you ended up settling for a bit to graduate mm -hmm. at Fort Mill. Um, where throughout in this time do you find um, the passion? For music or what you do, is it something that you were thinking about? Like, like because you're you're an athletic dude. I mean, yeah. you're built for it tough. Let's be <laughs> so that football thing was probably in the back of your mind. Yeah, but of course, you had some other things to worry yeah. about. Was it the same with the music? Where it's like, was the passion there early on? Which you were like, I'm gonna get to this later. Yeah, where it's just like, honestly, music was like that's my that was like my. First, first love. So as a kid, anybody really truly know me, I was always an artistic kid. Mm -hmm. Like I was a kid that could come in here like at six, seven years old 
and draw a picture of your face and it look exactly like you. Dang. I could paint. I was doing you poetry. Do so yeah, I can still draw like a motherfucker. A lot of people don't, literally don't nobody know that. I can mm. draw, yeah, I can draw like a motherfucker. Or something new. As a yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, actually going back to that group we had, the Ridiculous Kids, if you ever see a logo with a man with a, with a, uh, uh, his head in his hand, I drew that. That was our logo. Mm. Yeah, I drew that at like 10. 10 or 11 one of them okay but yeah but um i was always an artistic kid um growing up i was always around music my mama was a music lover uh pops at the time he was a music lover my grandma she was a music lover so and that's one of the people that really raised me for real um so i remember at like five or six um my first song that i, I did and I basically like put it in rap form. Was the R. Kelly uh, "I Wish"? Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cause I want to say it was like one of my cousins had got killed or something like that. And I had I was used to seeing murders and all of that stuff, but that was the first person I was like really close to. Yeah. And I was so young, so I, I wrote down R. Kelly "I Wish" song. Literally, I'm listening to it, and every time I miss a part, I run it back, writing all the lyrics, and then I put it in rap form. And that's when I was like, man, I'm going to be a rapper. So I used to uh, get on the laptops at school, uh, come up with slideshows, come up with different rap names and stuff like that. Yeah. And literally like write down of like how I'm going to be a star, how I'm going to become a star, uh, like, all, like all of that, bro. Um, come up with slideshows, put my picture and like, uh, like uh, what? Kind of like a Photoshop joint of a crowd. In a portfolio. Yeah. Like oh, I used, no, Photoshop. Okay. Yeah, kind of like stuff like that. I was doing that at six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Like, I always, always done, done had that that mindset. Um, I used to go to the studio with some of my cousins, too. And first person I went to the studio with was my cousin. Uh, it might have been Darren. It was. It was It was Darren. We was in Shelby. And he was older than me. But I'm like, cuz, let me go with you, da, 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 da. So we end up going to the studio, and um, I'm like, man, let me let me rap. He's like, bro, you don't know how to rap. <laughs> and it's a group, it's a room, but it's like 20, 20 dudes in this room. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's smoking and everything. And I'm a little kid. Might like, let me rap. So they let me get on the mic. Mm. They didn't know that I could actually rap. Mm. So I'm rapping, and I said something. I'm like, uh. Da, 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 da. I keep more white than Yo Gotti. And everybody was like, what the fuck? Everybody just started what? going crazy. Yeah, everybody started going crazy. Like, bro, you so young, bro. We ain't know you could rap. And da, 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 da. And that, like, from that moment right there, it put a fire inside of me. Like, all right, I'm going to do this, this shit one day. Yeah, I'm like, this is it. This is it. And then from that point, I used to go to the studio all the time with cousins and uncles. Um, and I would always get the same reaction. Cause I could rap better than every last one of them, and they would be nineteen years old, and I ain't number nine, I ain't wow. number ten, and stuff like that. Nine? Yeah. So from that point, I always knew I was gonna do it, and I just always loved it, bro. Like I just I always felt like a fucking rock star my whole life. So mm. yeah. So you seen it? You seen it back then? Like, yeah, for like, sure. It sounds like you. This is something that you. Put into fruition. I mean, even you going back to you like placing yourself in the crowds. And, yeah, like, you know, yeah. Everybody's probably done that. Like, yeah. and, and, like having that moment of like, yo, one day this is going to come into fruition, where I'm going to be in front of these crowds in real life. And then I would say probably another milestone was doing it in front of people, like Thanks. how you did in the studio. Thanks. So, um, with that being said, we go back into Fort Mill. You being a teenager. Um, when do when do y'all or, or when do you make the move to Atlanta? Is this recent or is this like nah? Recent? So I we was always back and forth to Atlanta. So my okay. granddaddy been in Atlanta like literally living in the same house for like sixty years. Okay, um, like he's like a a milestone in his hood. Mm. Like you know what I'm saying? Everybody know crazy, crazy Atlanta native. Yeah, crazy cow. Like ain't nobody gonna mess with him. They see him. They see him. Like he respected. You know what I'm saying? So. uh yeah, so we was always back and forth, like literally from the the moment I was born, as long as I can remember, we always been just moving back and forth, moving back and forth. Shit mm. get hard here, we go there. Shit get hard, you know what I'm saying? And then him and my mama used to butt heads, so mm. we'll be there for eight months, nine months. Come back. Come back, you know what I'm saying? Stay here for a little minute, go back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to, man, I used to love Atlanta. I always loved Atlanta. Mm. And just... 
guess it was it's always been easy for me to love Atlanta too because it's always been my home. Like Atlanta always done embrace done embrace me as home yeah, because we always been there so much. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's what's up. I didn't yeah. know if it was um recent or if it was a time where which it sounds like it was the latter. But throughout this process, you were connected with Atlanta yeah. through family. And yeah. It just got to a point to where you stay there now. Yeah, yeah. And so that's dope to have because now you have the best of both worlds in a sense. Like yeah. You grew up around this side and you grew up around in Atlanta to where you have that not only um, camaraderie of family, but you network yeah. to where you have these moments to when you come back to to a Charlotte, you still have roots somewhere. Facts. And so that's dope to get the boast of best, the boast of both worlds like yeah. it's kind of similar with myself i never went back to atlanta but i went to elementary elementary school in atlanta okay I went to, um like king springs elementary yeah i think it's over there like around like marietta or something yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. king spring i think i told you this yeah you did. <laughs> you did you did, you did. Like, i would end up going to like griffin middle school and all that but then yeah. i ended up moving back here to uh do middle school and high school but it was cool people, like yeah. cool, cool atmosphere. I got robbed a couple of times going back and forth, <laughs> but I mean, chalk that up to the game. Like yeah. for Atlanta, for for a long period of time, like Atlanta is like our our cousin that we always bump heads with. Yeah, like when it comes to Charlotte, because sure. it's a love, it's a love hate relationship in the sense of we love to see that a city like Atlanta has blossomed, like how it's blossomed. But then we always have had that chopped liver feeling. Facts. In a sense, Facts. Of like, dang, like, why these cats ain't coming up here? Yeah. Like, why these cats ain't doing here? Not understanding to later on, the antidote for that was that these guys got it early on that teamwork made the dream work. Teamwork made the dream you know? work. Like, bro. I don't yeah. care, like, bro, who is your who is your producer? Like, and not to say all Atlanta people get along, because you know that. Yeah, all yeah, Atlanta yeah, people don't get yeah. along. But they understood the assignment enough to be like, Let's make sure we do this for the city. Facts. Let's, let's Facts. put this stuff aside. Let's do this. Let's do that. We can all eat. You know, they even if you know, like Gucci, Gucci and Jeezy just got to a level where they were just Facts. like, we Facts. can be in the same room. But at that same time, throughout that process, nobody, no, everybody was still eating. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that camp could eat. That camp could yeah. eat. And, and they was, started out together. Yeah, I mean, they started Coach, out. Coach K. Yeah, like, yep. that connection. That connection was there. Was so icy and like. A lot of people forget yep. that. So that was that was a full circle moment to see that come back. But I say that to say even with real, like, a life was lost in that. Yep. Like, even with real beef, cats were still eating. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, you right. ain't going to stop me from eating. Sometimes I feel like it'll it'll be, and we're finally getting past that here in the Charlotte community where when a click is on, a click is on. Thanks. And sometimes that click, like, like how people say, like, um, the, one of the biggest things they hate that happened with 50 Cent was with G-Unit. He he held New York hostage. Facts. In a sense, to where a lot of people that's from New York be like, that era was 50 cents. And the reason it made New York have a decline hip hop wise is because he, he kept it in the chokehold. Facts. Like in that sense. He, he didn't spread it out enough and he didn't connect enough um, because of, I feel like, years of being, you know, slept on. When he finally had his torch, he was like, nah. And then he was beefing with a lot of cats. And so, Crazy like, shit. Not to interrupt you. My cousin. No, please interrupt me. <laughs> my, no, 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 you good. My cousin was the first person to bring 50 Cent to Charlotte. What? Avion, rest his soul. He That's was the very up. first. Yeah, he was the very first person to bring uh, 50 Cent down here. They actually, they had a song together. What era was this? This was like this was like the height of like get rich. Early, or early, or early two right thousands. This was not. This was before he got on. This is like when he first How to rob and So like, yeah, 50 Cent came down. So he was down south a lot mm, back then. You know what I'm yeah. saying? This was before Get Rich or Die Trying. This was before all of that. Mm. Um, and yeah, yeah, he was he was down here. Uh, so this is man. after he got shot. Was this after or before he got shot? I think this might have been before. Was it before? I oh, don't know. Man, I don't know. Matter of fact, I want to say my my aunt still got the CD. Because mm. yes. fifty, a lot of people to realize was doing his thing for a minute too. Before like Thanks. that 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 shooting and a recovering process like. He bounced back from that, but like he was rapping before that. Facts. Like, he was coming Facts. before that. Yeah, he was. He but was. He I was. feel like him surviving that and then going with that persona. Yeah. Um, I think took him to another level when he survived that. Um, but yeah, I can believe that. That's what's up. Shout out to your cousin. God rest yeah, his soul. Man. Yo, Avion, man, that's my dog, man. I love you, man. Yeah, that's what's up. Sure. That's what's up. Sure. Um, with that, um, going back to what I was saying that Charlotte was missing. 
that Atlanta figured out early on is that camaraderie. Yeah. You know, we're going to make sure that we, we may have our in-town beefs, but when it comes to nationally, like, they're going to think we connected. Facts. Because a lot of people think that about Atlanta. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. they think from the outside looking in that everybody is connected and everybody's, like, lovey-dovey. Yeah. Up until you get inside, then you know, like. It's a little different. Yeah, it's, so a, it's a little movie, different. Yeah. And I feel like that's one thing that Charlotte is trying to do now. Yeah. In the sense of, like, let's put this stuff aside, man. If we're really trying to grow this city like how it should be, let's build it up like how it should be now. But now it's, it's we got more structure. Yeah. Because you now, now you got the Arnold Taylors. Now you got the King Carters who... All right, we're going to find this talent in Charlotte. We're going to find this talent from here. And they kind of like putting together. They Not kind of, they are. They have, they have put man. together, you know what I'm saying, a plan, a structure. You know what I'm saying? Before it was just like, it's 100 artists out here and all of us just, we got our own clique. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And we just like, all right, whatever. And nobody really got no sense of direction. Nobody really got nobody to look up to and be like, all right, we can follow after this person. Or we know he can put us on. The people that was put on back then was kind of like holding nuts on people like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, like, all right, yeah. I ain't on y'all level no more. Yeah. Even though we were just performing together a week a week, a week ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Been there, done that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not going to help. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so now it's, you know what I'm saying, different. And like, honestly, as far as like the, like that, that camaraderie and that teamwork make the dream work mentality, I take, I take that mindset and I do that in every place that I've ever lived in. I got family in, all of that. So from from Baltimore to Charlotte, Shelby, Atlanta, Virginia, Columbus, Ohio, no matter where I've lived at, I can go to any of these places and I have I know for a fact like I got a certain crowd of people that really rock with me. You know what I'm saying? Genuinely out of all these places. So no matter where I go, like I I can do this, I can do that, I can do it. just off the love, you know what I'm saying? Just off the love and me me already having the vision in my mind, like I right, if I do it this way, now when I go to these places, it's easier for me to build. It's easier for me to walk in certain rooms. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause if I get if I go to Baltimore right now and I call, you know what I'm saying, hey, cuz da 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 yeah, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. I right, say no more. We got this going on. We got that going on. Yeah. All right, now I'm in a room with these people. You know what I'm saying? I would never been able to get in that room if it wasn't based off of the camaraderie I have with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now, those connections were made. Everywhere I go now is my mindset is teamwork, make the dream work. Mm-hmm. And I got a small team no matter where I go. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's how you get to the levels of like – um because we've had these discussions like and, and like I said it's dope to have you on here to actually like talk nice. on with it because nice. we've had these these discussions do DM of the potential I see and where you are now and where it's gonna go Facts. now you know notice I didn't say where it could go where it's gonna go Facts. because like Facts. my friend that you're in I've already told you bro you're worldwide minded and so with that if you think of even these worldwide artists um, it's like, like we'll use even like Drake for example Worldwide, you know, it don't get much bigger box office than that. Facts. Aside from like, you know, right now it might be Bad Bunny. Bad yeah. Bunny's having a heck of a run. He's going crazy. But, yeah, and that's we gonna get into that later on when it comes to like the deal. Because, yeah. You know, I just heard about the type of deal that he got. Yeah. You know, he got a ninety ten, but that's something else that we gonna. That's something else that we about to talk about dealing with that when you being like a businessman. Yeah. But using Drake as an example, it's not just Toronto. You know. Yeah. It's it's, it's not OVO. Um, has many members. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not just Toronto. It's Houston. It's New York. It's Atlanta. You know, it's California. Yep. It's it's different branches to this tree, which is OVO. Yep. And that's how he's able to. It's probably for it's it's UK. You know, it's and that's how you become a you know a global brand and a global sensation like how he has for many years. Right. It's not based with the the mentality of. It's just us. As you as you start expanding, you start realizing, hey, this guy's good at this. This guy's good at that. You know, they treated me right here. You know, it's and and then you know there comes to debate where people be like checking in type stuff. Yeah. Like I've always been. I don't call that checking in. I just call it talking to family. Facts. Like, at the same time, facts. like I'm not gonna go to Atlanta and not hit you up. Be like, yo, That's bro, like you in town? Like what's yeah. good? What's going on out here, bro? Like what's going on? 
I, my boy just came here from New York. Like he did a he did a podcast episode before um, you came last week. Hit me up, like bro. Yeah. Like I'm in the city. What's going on in here tonight? Yeah, you know, what's, what's the move? Like where can I perform at? Like yeah. stuff like that. That's that's not checking in. That's that's looking out with family. Thanks. And so Drake did a good job of that, knowing the people that he can rely on when he goes to these different cities and build his brand, build his network. To where it become what it is now, Thanks. and it's it's just you're doing the same thing. You yep. know, you talked about Betty Grind early on, um, but just like studying that and, and, and that formula, and that's the same way, same thing with Drizzy. Like yep. that's a great formula to study. It is, you know? it is. Honestly, honestly, man, when I look at it, artists like Betty for Charlotte, damn near was like, he was damn near moving like a masterpiece. Mm. With how he was moving, no other artist from Charlotte was doing that. You had other, you had other artists from Charlotte that was getting signed, mm -hmm. but as far as marketing, mm -hmm. as far as like branding, as far as like structure, as far as like just strategy, there's only a few. There's it's only, only a, few. a few. Nope, man. Betty at that was, time, yeah, at that, that time. time, like Betty was really like, right, no matter where you went, you heard that that ad lib. Uh, what he should do? Uh, I remember being a kid. Matter of fact, I remember being a kid watching BET Awards and his commercial. You you remember that? Um, his commercials this, this used like to come on. Fly? Yeah, yeah, damn it, I'm fly. Everywhere, mm -hmm. and I remember seeing that as a kid. I ain't number nine, ten years old. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like he from Charlotte, bro. Like mm -hmm. that's, bro. Nobody was moving like Betty Grind, bro. Yeah, yeah. Nobody was moving like Betty Grind. Betty Grind, DM me back, bro. <laughs> I DM'd you. I DM'd you, bro. I don't man, want so nothing from we you. We love bro. you out here, Betty yeah, man. Bro. We love what I you did, I don't want nothing bro. from you, bro. I, I just, I just want this. Yeah. I just want this, bro. We gonna we gonna get back and um. We gonna make those connections because like full circle moment is crazy because like um we were talking about like the, the Carolina Awards or yeah, yeah. awards that you were talking about earlier on. I remember he will not remember this when I, and this is a full circle moment because I used to work for this <laughs> I used to work for this magazine back in the day. Yeah. Called Celebrity Power Magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like I was doing what I'm doing now. But at that time, like, I was just, like, I was only doing it yeah. because, like, it was, like, an internship. Yeah. Like, I was doing it because my sister had put me on. She connected with the, um, she went to school with the dude who was the owner of Okay. It. And so, like, he was giving me, like, these interviews with, like, Mark, uh, Matt Barnes, like, ex-wife. And, like, I was doing them. <laughs> but it was just, like, yo, but, like, you know, you, you think back on stuff like that. Like, man, that's crazy that I really went into that field. Yeah. Later on. But I say that to say. Um, one of my things I had to do was interview people at that award show. Yeah. And I remember Betty Grind coming in. I remember he came in with um S Dub, who's three now. Yeah. And them cats came in and like <laughs> them boys came in like the black beetles. Yeah. You know? Like yeah. they just came in. Everybody was like, ah <laughs> It's just like and this is this that time. This yeah. that time frame of like Bow, now. Like, like damn it, I'm yeah. out. Yeah. So yeah. like, I'm like, you know, he moving like a black beetle. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, Betty, but you know what? Goes to show you, like, even with that, he took the time. Like, because, like, I was doing, like, my my whole, I was watching cats. I was yeah. studying the game, and I was seeing how cats was interviewing. Yeah. And so cats really weren't trying to be interviewed like that. And so I was like, all right, well, my mentality coming into this, I'm going to do quick interviews. I'm only gonna do, I'm only gonna do two questions on these cats. Like yeah, for real. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just straight to the point. And yeah. I think he got my he I re, he respected the fact that I did it so quick. Yeah. Like he was like, that's it. I was like, yeah, that's it. I'm out. <laughs> 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 but I say that to say like salute to Betty like cause he's been doing that thing for a minute, man. Yeah. Running this like the formula of what he's done, even like trans like writing books. Yeah. Like the businessman, like like cats of he our did. generation took note to that, man. Be like, man, like if he Cause I think that was even before like, that was before like like shout out to Young Nut like yeah. Young Young Two Two Three that was before like the One Hundred Six and Part stuff anybody nice. from us like being on there like he was the first that we were seeing 
doing commercials. Like, exactly. That's, like you yeah. see this joint. Yeah, like he, yeah. Of course, probably paying for that yeah. and all that, but it's just like who had bread enough to like but it's still, get it yeah. on a BET commercial. Yeah, like it take, like, it take motion to do that. Like, yeah. you're not just waking up every day and like, I right, for, for the BET Awards, I'm going to put a commercial out there. Like that take, first off, connections. Yeah. You got to know somebody, know somebody, know somebody. You know what I'm saying? That might think about pulling that trigger on that. Mm-hmm. You got to have the capital for it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because this going to cost. That's a ticket. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that, all of that, how they was moving was crazy. And I, remember, I don't know if you remember, at that time, uh, S-Dub had a, uh, he had a song on a Waist, waist Deep soundtrack. Oh, man, I used to know that S-dub, song by heart. S-Dub did it too, bro. Yeah, I used to know that song by heart, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, because every time I used to watch that movie, I'm like, bro, he from Charlotte. Like, yeah. yeah. Remember he was on that show? He was on that competition? Yep. Like, he, yep. like He's been doing this thing for a minute, for bro. For a minute, yeah. Like, he's like, saying, so it made sense for me, because, like, these guys were, like, shh, our celebrities, bro. Yeah. Like, growing up, like, when I was in high school, they're older than me. So they're, like, my brother's age. Like, they're. They're, I, I would think they're like my older brother said because yeah. when I'm in high school, these like these cats are doing this, like, facts, facts. and so like facts. I'm looking at them when I'm like recording, I'm like, yo, like, dang, like these cats are like, like they right here, like, and it facts. made me realize, like, dang, like it's possible, yeah, like being in the same room with cats like that, you start to realize, like, um, especially if they're nice, yeah, you know, because I've met some people where it's, you know, it's unfortunate, like we didn't have the best first impression. But it's dope That's when they meet fact. the people that you mess with. It's dope when you meet the people that you you really genuinely have like respect for, and they yeah. give you a good impression. And that's one thing I can say about Elevator J. Like the like the I remember like from the first moments I met him, he was always like the coolest. Like he was just so cool, bro. Like mm. being a kid, being around him, and like I said, like. Going back when I was rapping back then, I remember performing with him at like Scandalos, him, De Niro, like we talked about earlier, and people not really like tuning in to them just because that music was different. Yeah. I remember doing like uh, charity foundation um, events with them, all of that. And they were never like, even when they kind of like both started bubbling up, it was always the same energy. Like they were just genuine people. It was like, I don't know. It was just, so going back to what you were saying, like, it's just, I don't know. It make you feel good when you see somebody that you look up to or you feel like, all right, man, I want to be like this. I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And they're actually good people. You know what I'm saying? They genuine people. They real people. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Who's left a bad taste? Would you would you expose that? <laughs> Who left a bad taste? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Who left a bad taste? Um, or has anybody enough to the point to where you'd be like, man, like, are you don't? And if you don't want to say the name, you don't have to. I mean, I'm trying mean? to think. No, I, I'll say it. I mean, I, I, I ain't got. Yeah, I said uh, bad taste to where it motivated you in a sense. Because I've had those moments where it's like yeah. you'll meet someone and it'd be like, man, you know what, man? If I ever get in a position. Like, I make sure not to be like that, man, because... I'll tell you who, uh, I remember being like, I think I was 11 at this moment. And mind you, like, we buzzing in the city. Like, everybody rocking with us, like... And her name was Diamond. Uh, Yummy, yummy, give me some. Um, Yummy, yummy. uh, Diamond from Crime Out? Nah, nah. It was, uh, she light-skinned. She from Charlotte. And she used to have, like, some little buzz on the radio and stuff like that, too. And we used to see her all the time. And I remember, like, and not don't get me wrong. I know people go have bad days. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So she might have been stressed out or something. But I remember, like, might have been my, my manager. She went up to her, like, yo, you know, I want to introduce y'all, you know what I'm saying, you to mm-hmm. the ridiculous kids, da, 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 da. She kind of, like, looked and was just like, I don't got time for it. Like, yeah. What do you think I am? Yeah, I'm like, damn, why she doing us like that? You know what I'm saying? We just jits. But I'm like, you know what? All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, it's still still right now, it's it's certain artists that I've came across Mm -hmm. that didn't know who I was. Yeah. And they kind of like, I kind of like 
try to little boy me in a way. Mm-hmm. It wasn't nothing. I'm not asking nothing from you. Yeah. I'm. I got my own emotion, bro. I don't need nothing from you. Yeah. It's just me trying to be genuine and chop it up with you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like introduce myself. Just be a human. Yeah. yeah. But then uh, some of those same artists, when I see them later on, mm-hmm. then double back. Like, bro, I remember you. I ain't even know. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. That's what's up. And I'm I still know you knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I know it yeah. is crazy, but it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's okay. Peace be with you, bro. I ain't got no problem with you. I ain't tripping. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you that. who was genuine. Freeway. Freeway. Freeway, Freeway bro. I got a I got a dag on autograph from Freeway that my brother got from him that I still have. Yeah, dag on. He actually. Bringing him back up. I got to get Youngin on the show. That, um, he did a song yeah. with Youngin223 called If You Looking For Me. Word. Mm-hmm. So Freeway did a song with, uh, I don't know if you remember, Big Dreek. Dreek. Big Dreek. So, uh, SBE, Southern Boys Entertainment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they were buzzing back then. So that's who we used to always be with. Be with. And uh, when they was just in the studio, like they did a video shoot when they was in the studio. And Drake like, yo, these my these my little niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? They going crazy, da 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 da. So uh, we had an engineer slash producer at the time named Kevin, and Drake like, Kevin, put on a beat. So shit, freeway like shit, rap. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh shit, nothing this, for me. I'm like, shit, this my moment because I used to idolize people like Freeway because he's yeah. a real rapper. Yeah, he's I'm like, yeah. I'm like, shit, this my moment. So I just start boom, boom boom just going in, and then my homie rap. He like. He looked at me though. He like looked me in my eyes. He like, yo, you got something. Yo, yeah. He like, yeah, you got something. He was like, yo, you talented. He was like, if you keep going, you gonna get everything you want out of life. I promise you. Yeah. So shit like that was like, damn, like freeway just Motivation. said that. Yeah. Him, Rick Ross. Ross probably don't even remember that same studio. Like I met Ross, Rocco. Um, man, it was so many people I, I we ran across at that age, like and yeah. rap for and all of that. And all of them, like, I I don't think I ever had a, a moment where an artist of that caliber looked at me and, and kind of, like, I could tell they wasn't really rocking with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I knew we could rap for yeah. a fact. I don't give for what you put on. I know for a fact we could rap. You, you know, know what, what you can do. Yeah, yeah, so. It ain't nothing wrong with seeing gangsters cry. Why wouldn't I? When I just held my Shelly cause her baby died. Funerals. I done seen them stiff ones way too many times. Who woulda knew? Last time that we argued be the last time. Mad as hell, cussing up at God. Told them to rewind. They took the Asian. Nigga want revenge for all the nights I cried. Spin on them. Take some of they numbers, then we spin again. Difference is, I'ma come get you and not no innocence. Yeah, for the battle too. Yeah. It's yeah. confidence and and preparation. You know, yeah. being prepared for those moments. You know, it's just like. Cat see stuff, you know, they they see um, you know, Giannis, you know, they see these cats in clutch time, fourth quarter situations. They're not seeing the thousand layups, the thousand jump shots that they're doing in the gym before Facts. that game, throughout that week, studying film, um, to where when that moment finally comes, um, they're prepared. Facts. You know, the the greats are the greats because of discipline and preparation. You know, and, and when that time comes, they're ready for it. Just like with you and somebody, you know, if if you walked in front of Ye, you know, you'd have that moment. Facts. It's like if Ye tried you on like some big shine stuff and yeah. it's just like spit something right now. I want to hear something. You like Facts. <laughs> locked and loaded, ready to go. You want my Instagram? You want my you want my because some people don't have that. Yeah. You know, I was just telling someone um, I was talking about the podcast and I was bringing up a chick that I used to talk to. Not like talk to, but like she was just a female friend of mine. And she opened my game up to where, like, she was like, this is, like, when I was first starting it. And um, she was like, she was like, yo, like, what can I listen to it on? And at that time, this was, like, one episode. It was, like, on Spotify. Uh, not Spotify, on uh, SoundCloud. Yeah. And she was like, okay. Like, she didn't know. Like, she was just novice. Like, you know, it's levels to listen to yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, cats. If you ain't no artist, like, most people ain't going to know about SoundCloud. Facts. unless Like, they kind of know about it now that it has an app. Yeah. But this is before the app. Facts, and so it facts. was like SoundCloud to, was like real yeah, underground. You had to like go on SoundCloud and, <laughs> and like like this is like she's just a novice listener. She's yeah. listening quick. Like what, what what can I listen to it? And I was like, well, you can listen to it on SoundCloud. She was like, uh, like, um, like what? Like it's not on Apple. It's not on Spotify. Yeah. And I was like, nah, it ain't on there yet. She was like, oh, like you lost me. <laughs> and like, she was, and I was like, dang, like she saw the look on my face. She was like, I'm just joking, but like. 
you need to figure that out. No, nah, like, for facts. real. Like she was like, because you never know. She was like, I could have been for CBS. Like I could have been for like she was making sense what she said. And a lot of the time, it's some people miss the opportunity because of preparation. I I say all that to say that to like in your time, how you are now, how you evolved through all the stuff that you've gone through. If that opportunity comes, when it comes. You're locked and loaded. Facts. You want bars? I got bars for you. You want my Instagram? I got that. You want you want my music? Here, here's the music. Here's the facts. Damn, you got have all that stuff ready. Like, and this is the, the people listening, like the youngsters, the younger than us. Like, have your stuff on point because you never know when that opportunity, who you'll run into, who you'll bump heads with. And so, facts. you know, that's a perfect example. Like, Freeway was in that studio. You tsh, young, you like, let's facts. get it. It's nothing. I got matter of <laughs> fact, I got pictures with dude and everything. Like. Hum- man, he was so humble, bro. Like, yeah. so humble, bro. Yeah. That'd be the dopest stuff, man, when you meet the ones that's really humble, really get it. Because then it makes you, because, like, you go through you go through your life journeys, man, and, like, I feel like God will give you those moments like what he did with you when you were younger. Um, and probably other moments that he's giving you to where it's like, yeah, you're meant for this. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. You'll have those moments where your back is against the wall. You know, it's not all peaches and cream. And when you have a moment like that, um, it'll solidify that you're moving in the right motion. Facts. You know? So that's dope to hear that you have that. When, like, getting out of the group now, now you're getting older into, like, knowing what bars are, what flow pattern is, yeah. what beat you want to get yeah. on. Um, what, what Was your name, Tonio the Great, in the group? When did that transpire? Nah, so, when, did, when did you evolve to that name? So, all right, so now, when I was that age, I was young, smooth, before then, I was a uh, little gutter. Mm. Uh, I went through a couple different names, but uh, when we like when we finally like was like, all right, we're gonna take this super serious. That's when I, my name became uh, Young Smooth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but speaking on bars and all of that, I knew what that was then. So you knew that at an early I, age. I knew you that. Knew how to count the bars. I knew how to count bars at eight years old. Okay. I knew how to like. He said, "Don't sleep on my yeah, young yeah. dude." Because I like, <laughs> yeah, I used to study like, I used to study Wayne. I used to study Jay. I used to study people like Freeway, study the Grace, Benny Siegel. Like I used to study like all these different people, and just listening to them. Tupac. And my mom was a Tupac head, and she Word. was a mystical head. Mm. Um, I used to study them, like the whole like. I miss school used to da, 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 and just go up, so come down. Yeah. So unorthodox. So, so and then great. he could rap regular and then he'd yeah. switch it up and all of that. Mm-hmm. I used to study all that. I used to study Jay Z's old stuff, like, because my, my, my uncles and stuff used to have like CDs and all of that yeah. on hand. So I used he to He was study rapping like a machine. When though. he was rapping fast, mm-hmm. Buster Rhymes. I used to study Buster Rhymes like crazy, bro. Like, just listening to him, everybody like, oh, he's just rapping fast. Nah, Buster got nah. something to say. He really talking. Like back when Buster really came out and was really talking about the uh some people don't some people this might go over some people's head, but when he was talking about the new world order shit. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Revelations and all of that. Mm-hmm. I was really studying Buster at nine, eight, nine, ten years old. Yeah. I was fascinated with that type of shit. Fascinated with them type of rappers. Like like yeah, I, so I knew what bars was. I knew what metaphor, metaphors was like um, using certain words to. Yeah, I, I I was already on all of that. Yeah, I was I was on all that. Super right. young, the right. art of storytelling, all of that. Listening to rappers like Scarface. Mm, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's up. Yo. So when did um? So we 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 leaving smooth. When did the great come? When did, when did, when did great come into play? Honestly, that didn't come in until when I said I was going to gonna lock in mm. this time. And that came from my brother. Mm. Um, so my brother used to call me the great. Mm. And at this time, like, he started calling me that. We was, like, 15, 16, something like that. Okay. And I ain't have, like, I ain't have shit to be called the great about. Keep it 100, like. No reason for nobody to call me that. I wasn't doing nothing great. Going on. It was a lot going. You know what I'm saying? And he used to always just say that, like, "Bro, you the great, you the great, you the great, you the great." And he used to always tell me, "Bro, you need to lock back in on music. Like, you slacking." He what damn. What year is this? This is like twenty fourteen ish. When he used to always like tell me, like, "Bro, like, you need to lock back in on the music." 
Like, bro, like, I know you saying you ain't, you ain't got the love for it no more. I know you saying this. I know this going on. But, bro, like, nah, bro, you need to you need to get right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you tripping. Yeah. I just wasn't. Mentally even bad. though I wanted to, I'm just like, bro, it's too much going on in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He used to always call me that. And then I remember creating my first Instagram page around that time. And then that's when I, I named my, my Instagram page Tony the Great. Mm-hmm. Um. And bro, just yeah, he just kept putting it in my head, like, bro, like, you need to get back to yourself, bro. Like, yeah. you don't even know what you got, bro. Like, so from that moment, like, it can be a group of people. You should, it could be a hundred people in this room. Mm-hmm. And my brother, it'd be like, my brother, the best rapper in here. Mm, yeah. He was he was that type of like, bro, like, mm-hmm. my brother, the best rapper in here, bro. As he Freestyle, should. spit something right now. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I don't even rap. You know what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he knew, like. He knew it was in there. Yeah, like, he, you know what I'm saying? He knew, like, what I was on. Mm-hmm. It, bro, no it's matter. It's like riding a bike. Yeah, bro. Like, he a, man, rap about bro right here. Rap about what he got on. Mm-hmm. It, he used to be on that type of time. So, that's when I was, like, that's when I kind of adopted the name. And then, uh, this go around, like, I was just like, that's me. I was sitting there thinking, like, man, should I go by another? And I'm like, nah, it's Tonio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm and I'm the great. Like, so that's where it, that's where it came from. Word, yeah. word. That's dope. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. So I want to ask in two things. Um, with like, I noticed you said it was a moment in your time where you lost that love. So, where exactly did you lose it? And we kind of know a little bit of so. How you regained it. Yeah. But I want you to explain just um, how did you get yourself? Because, you know, when, when you lose things like that, a passion or something, we're talking about you You had since you were a kid. Yeah. Um, it's something going on here. Yeah. You know? So what mental hurdle did you have to get yourself through to pull yourself out of that? Yeah. Because that's, that's a little for me personally, from the outside looking in, that's a depression. Yeah, that's that's something that locked you in to where you had to get out of. Yeah. So how did you get that passion back? How did you get that love back? Um, man, what drew me away really like it was life. What kind of like started you know pulling me away from it? I wouldn't even say I started losing the love. Really, I just used that. I just used certain words when people would ask me. I ain't fucking with that shit, man. I would say that to kind of mask my love for it. But it was so much going on during that time to where I just, I just, I couldn't like, I, I, we couldn't go to the studio. We couldn't do this. We could I couldn't even fathom the thought of, you know what I'm saying, sitting down, writing those songs at that very moment when literally like, it's cold as fuck. You know what I'm saying? We in the crib. And literally, we ain't got no lights, no heat. I can blow my breath in this motherfucker, and all I see is mist. Yeah. We literally, I got uh, the song, uh, No Handouts. When I said double-coated, layers ain't got no feeling, we literally in the house. It's wintertime, bro. It's snowing outside. We all got on hoodies. Mm. We all got on jogging pants on top of jogging pants. Yeah. Double sock under the cover. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like. All sleeping in the same bed just to stay warm and shit like that. Like, so I, I wouldn't even, man, it, I wouldn't even. But I would say like, I knew, some way somehow I was gonna find my way back. Mm-hmm. I just knew it, bro. Like, cause the love was there. Yeah, my love. Was like just, you I, said, it wasn't an absence of love. It was a a test in time. Yeah, yeah. Dealing with what you were dealing with. Yeah. yeah. And then what got me back was I just kept having this urge. So, like, probably, like, might have been, like, 2019. I just had this tug, like, right, get back get back in the music, get back in the music. Give it a but run. I was trying to brush it off, though. I'm like, I ain't doing this shit. I ain't doing it. Mm-hmm. I think I went to the studio and I did, like, a song or two or something. Like, no, I went to the studio and I did seven songs. In like two hours. Oh wow! And it was a group of dudes that came in there. Um, shout out gnarly, gnarly Marley. Um, it's, it was it was a bunch of y'all in there, and they came in and they was listening. 
And they was like, damn, like, you, oh, you, you really do this. I'm like, you know, something like that. And they're like, bro, how long you been doing it? I'm like, I just came in here today. Mm. And the producer named Pia, Pia was like, yeah, bro, he just did all these shits. Mm. He's like, what the fuck, bro? Like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, bro, I just came in to get some shit off my chest. For yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it's I been there for a while. Man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I didn't touch, I ain't touch music from that point. And then this was 2021, last year, 2021. I remember it was a situation that happened and I called my girl and I was just like, I'm about to, I'm about to focus on music. I'm about to really lock in. Yeah. She's like, huh? What do you mean? I'm, like, I'm about to really lock in, like lock in, lock in. And do this shit like I know for a fact this shit is is meant for me. Yeah, that's just how I was feeling, and I was just like, all right. That probably like a, a couple months after that, I remember going to the studio, and same thing, bro. Like I went in there at like nine o'clock. I ain't leave till like three in the morning. Did like fifteen songs, and I'm just sitting there listening on the on my way back home. I'm like, damn, bro, like, can't nobody fuck with me, bro. Like, and that's how I was feeling. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I got to take this shit for real. And I remember my grandma telling me, she like, what you doing right now? You know, you you will make some money from it. You will do this. You will do that. But she like, you're going to be a star for music. Yeah. And I wasn't doing music at the time. And I'm like, why y'all keep saying stuff like that? But I don't want to hear that for real. Like God putting them people back in your, put, yeah. not putting them back, but putting that in your ear. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Through and people. That replayed in my head, bro. Like, so that's when, yeah, that's when I was like, all right, cool. So I did them. Then I seen my boy Tally. Um, Tally, Prolific Management. That's my dog, man. Um, Shout out to Tally. Yeah. We went to a Hawks game. And this was like just some, we, he didn't even know I, I used to do music. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't have no idea that I did music before. He didn't know, he didn't know nothing. Like, we just genuine friends, genuine homies, bro. Like, and it's been that way. Yeah. And we went to the Hawks game. He was about to try to walk to his uh, his his townhouse from the Hawks game, but it was super cold. Mm. I'm like, bro, what are you walking for? I'm like, bro, come on, bro, ride with me. Yeah. So we hop in the truck, and we start throwing on beats. We just joking around, joking yeah. around, da-da-da-da. And he managed uh, DJ Moon, and he played one of, uh, one of DJ Moon's beats. I'm like, damn, like, who made this beat? He like, oh, that's my, you know what I'm saying? That's my producer I got under me. You know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. That's my dog. I'm like, that's crazy. He like, what, you going to spit something to it? Mm. He ain't know. I'm like, oh, that's right up my alley for real, yeah. for real. So I'm like. Another sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, let me. So I started, da, 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 da. I started joking around or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he like, bro, you can actually rap. So I was like, I'm like, yeah, I do a little something or whatever. So then he put on, uh, I can feel it in the air. Oh, man. That Benny Siegel. That's one of my favorite Benny Siegel songs. And I went crazy on it, bro. And he was like, bro, like, I didn't, I had no idea. And he was like, bro, if you, if you really take this shit serious, I'm behind you 100%. Mm. No matter what you need, bro, like, I got you. Yeah. And I was like, shit, I, like, because this is somebody, like, he know what he's talking about. Yeah. And I was like, all right, bet. And from that moment, because he was like, bro, listen, like, it ain't too many artists that can give you a certain feeling with, when they rapping. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And how you how you just did that, bro? Like, he was like, bro, you got to focus. You got to lock in. Got to. So that's what I, that's when I was like, all right, this it's time, bro. Yeah. It's time. So uh, from that Everything point, start lining up. it just started lining up. Started lining up perfectly, bro. And every moment I have been even bigger than the last moment. Yeah. So, uh, that's what's up, man. Yo. That's what's up. That's beautiful because, like, it shows me so many different things of just like how because, like, I told I told people like even in this year, um, I use this year as an example, but I think in general God is a God of restoration. Thanks. But I believe in this year in particular, it's a year of restoration. And um, that's a perfect example of him reminding you, I haven't forgot about what I promised you, even in your bedroom when you were 
eight, nine years old. Facts. You know, some things have come into um, your life that have discouraged you, you know, um, made you, you know, sad. And, and you know, you, 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 you kind of shy away from the passion because yeah. of those moments that you have. Just becoming an adult, and, you know, getting it in from the mud like yeah. how you had to. Um, but I haven't forgot about what you're destined for. Facts. And it showed through people how he used those people as vessels to continually nudge at you. Facts. Showing you like Facts. come back to this. Come back to yeah. this. Don't don't lose the passion. Don't lose the passion. To where now you're seeing this stuff coming to fruition now, you know. It's a full circle moment. Facts. To where now you're older, you're more mature. Um, you know, I feel like you're you're prepared for what's in store for you. Because we're not talking about you know, um, just a rapper, bro. Like we we already know in the sense of like you can you can spit bars. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about artistry now. We're talking about in the sense of like um, crossing over boundaries of just yeah. not just a rapper, but artistry. Yeah. You know, doing different things in different markets, and I think this is the season for it. And so I think you went through as unfortunate, and of course, people go through things that are terrible. You go through those things, and they're, they're tests for the testimony to put you in the place that in, that you're in now. Thanks. And so, that's dope that throughout all that, you still had God whispering in your ear throughout people to where, you know, you took heed to it. And, you know, because it's free will. You could have just been like, nah, I'm good. Like, And, and then yep. live the remainder of your life, sadly, in a state of what if. Yeah. Because then some people get to levels where they like, dang, like, now it's too late. And so you took advantage of that. You know, you didn't ignore the signs of people continue like putting that in your ear. Facts. Putting that in your ear. And, and it's just beautiful to see. Cause now, like, I feel like once that happened, we're talking about like, I mean, I know you went through the process of recording this stuff, like like um, you know, undefeated and, and um um I wanna say underdog. Yep. Um, but all of this is twenty twenty two. That you had, that you released all of it in. Yeah. Yeah. Even 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 the most recent project project you just did, like so you hit the ground running. Bro, like, probably, once you knew it was on, like we're talking about three projects yeah. in, in one year. Yeah. And so Bro, honestly, bro, so far this year I probably got in twenty twenty two alone, I probably done recorded two hundred some songs. Mm-hmm. Still got a whole nother notebook of probably another two, three hundred songs that I done wrote. Not talking about just like songs, just like Oh, you just put some shit together, like yeah, like full complete songs, like you gonna see, bro. The direction of artists, like the, my art is about to go, is com- like completely. I just want to come out and just show people I can rap. Yeah, you know what it remind me of? Not in the sense of artistry, because I I feel like he's in that lane where he'll he'll be a, he is a a hip hop star. Um, you can cross over different lanes, but just the drive of yeah. when he came out, it reminds me in a sense of little baby. Of Thanks. how, like, when Baby came out, you know, he was he was coming from a rough atmosphere. Yeah. And he was one foot in, one foot out. And, of course, music was a part of his life throughout that process. Just jucking and jiving and, and, you know, rapping with the fellas. But he didn't want to take it seriously again. Thanks. He was tugging at it for a while to where people were finally like, bro. Like, when he got locked up that last time, he was like, bro, just hit the, hit the ground running. The people that, that really believed in him, just, just like you. You got to have those people. It's dope to have those people that really are in your ear yep. giving you the right stuff. Yep. You know, he could have he could have got out. And I'm pretty sure he had that. People just like, bro, get back on this block, bro. Like, yeah, yep. But he had people in positions to where they were like, bro, like, I see what you're doing. Like, I remember seeing in the, in the documentary that he just came out with recently. They got Thug on there with Thug. was like, bro, I used to pay him to stay in the studio. Facts. Like, I used to pay that man. Like, bro, what you need? How much you making on the street? Just stay in the studio for two hours. That's believing in a cat. Facts. Like that. Like you ain't gonna get that too too often. Facts. And so I say that to say when he everything clicked, like he hit the ground running. That consistency, project, project bro. Like, consistency, bro. I remember, I remember being a kid seeing flyers of Future when his his name was like Future, aka no, it was like Meathead or Meatball, aka the Future. <laughs> he had on a brown hat and a brown shirt, and the flyer was like uh, I forgot what what spot he was gonna be at. Damn, I forgot what spot he was gonna be at, but I remember seeing that. Like, that's crazy. That was his nickname too. Yeah, uh, he said yeah. that was his family, uh, yeah. family nickname. And then, like, I remember, like, probably when he dropped. This was before he dropped Dirty Sprite. Um, oh fuck, what tape was that? I used to, me, my my boy Omar Brooks, like, used to go crazy. Like, 
we really, the school we was at at the time, we was putting everybody on Future. Because this is like before anybody really knew who he was. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And to see where he is now, bro, it's a consistency, bro. Like, Superstar. It's nonstop consistency, bro. And that's where, like, I see artists like him. I see artists like Baby. Uh, Dub um, Baby. When he, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. there's so many different artists that I see. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, the music can set people apart. But it's the consistency, bro. Like, consistency is key. You yeah. tell people that all the time. Yeah. And that shows you as well um, that I feel like it's very big for people in Charlotte um, that I love to see from Atlanta. It showed me that um, it can be more than one superstar. Yeah. We ain't talking about just like these names that you're throwing out. These ain't just like local Atlanta rappers. Yeah. Atlanta, I think that's what, and that's what makes people like love Atlanta in that sense is the hope of realizing like bro we all can be superstars like in our lane yep. like you you got your lane like if you if you want to take it there if now consistency work at the, these dudes are in the studio in and out like I've heard the stories of these cats like the thugs the future the people nice. that we're naming like their 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 drive is what gets them there as yep. well even with Kurt like it shows people it's so many and I, and I, I don't forgot who I was talking to about this when it comes to Charlotte it's so many superstars in Charlotte. Yeah. It just comes down to the drive and, uh, and continuing to push through the mess. Putting their pride to the yeah. side, bro, and stop letting your ego make you feel like you too cool for school. Yeah. Like, I see a lot of That's artists doing sometimes. that. Like, everybody, like, you you might drop one project, and now niggas like, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, it's like, I can slack off type thing. Mm. That's why I, I, I'm rocking with uh, Fetty. Like, well, how he moving, like, he moving. You talking about Fatty P? Fatty P. Yeah. The way he moving, he moving the right way. Like, he consistent. He, he on is. social media. Yeah. Content, he consistently dropping. Back when Fatty first started really, like, really locking in with the music. Mm -hmm. He came, he was doing creative-ass videos. Mm -hmm. He was going, you know, his direction was completely different than what everybody else is doing. His yeah. beat choice is completely different from what everybody else is doing. But he consistent. Yeah. Like, the artist that win, bro, it's just it's that consistency, bro. Like, and he has yeah. that natural ability. I I feel Fetty in the same way, um, like yourself, shows me he can be something outside of music. Yeah, because he's naturally funny. He gonna be an actor, bro. That's what I'm saying. Fetty Fetty P is naturally like funny, creative director. Yeah. I see him touching me just like you, like you. Like, even before hearing, for me, it solidified with, of course, hearing the music, like um, like Black Sheep and stuff. Like I was like, yeah. okay, like, this dude, like, you giving people your life. Yeah. And I'm just like, Psh, bro, like, I remember listening to that in the yeah. bathroom. I was like, I was like, yo, like, I was at Planet Fitness, you know, finishing the morning. I was like, yo, I just sat down and really listened to yeah. it. Because, you know, you, you work out and, like, you just be in the zone. You playing with the beat, the tempo, yeah. what something is. And uh, you had that, that, that classic, like, Hove beat on there. And I'm like, or the sample that what he used, and I was like, yo, <laughs> this dude, this dude, it like this yeah, dude for yeah, real, the yeah. one. Yeah. And so it's like that's when I that's when I told you like that was one of my favorite songs. And yeah. I was like, bro, like, cause we had been talking, just joking back and forth. Yeah. So when I match like the ability with the personality of who I felt it was, cause sometimes I don't I don't gotta meet someone to know that they genuine. Facts. Like, so Facts. Like, I'm real big off energy and all that stuff. And that's when I told you, I was like, bro, like. Whenever you in the city, I was like, wait a minute. I was like, where you at? Like, yeah, you in yeah, Charlotte? Yeah. Like, whenever you in the city, bro, like, you know, when it comes to, like, putting stuff on my story, I'm on it, bro. Like, Thanks. I'm like, you got you got a friend for life when it comes to this one because I'm all about upping our people up. Yeah. And, like, if it's something that I know you're consistent in doing and you dope at it, I want people to see that. And so I was just like, yeah, this boy got it, bro. Like, it, it come, when it comes to, like, the visuals, like, the appeal of the fans, the, the talent, because some people got a pill when it comes to, like, you know, image-wise. Facts. But they may not have the talent. That's so when you have all of that, like, bro, like, you just got to be patient, man. Facts. At the end of the day. Facts. Like, like, like how everybody's probably been telling you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You just got to be patient, bro, because it's there. Like, you got the remedy. That's a fact, man. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. Sure. I feel like, I feel like what's the name could have been a star out of Charlotte. I know this kind of off t off topic, but speaking on like consistency and speaking on really having that charisma to be a star, 
he could have been like the Boosie out of Charlotte, and that's don't. Don't. Yeah. I mean, it's still a chance for him. No, no, no. Oh, not, no, you're talking, 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 talking about Dunn Cartel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah rest yeah, in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I that's, agree on that. Yeah, that's that's my family. But Yeah, momentum. Yeah, yeah bro, like, I with the that. momentum he had, yeah. bro, he really could have been, and if you really listen to his songs from the beginning to, you know what I'm saying, that last project, he was getting better. Mm. Wordplay, getting better with, you know what I'm saying, lyricism and all of that. Yeah. I feel, I really feel like he could have been like a Boosie out of Charlotte, bro, like, honestly. Yeah. I think, and, and it's funny you mentioned him, um, because the last time I had been on here, he mentioned him. Yeah. With um with his cousin, shout out to Trap, that was on that episode with us. And we were just talking about the gap between um what happened around that time frame. And it may have been, because these labels been new about Charlotte. It's something that just had Facts. been holding them back. Facts. Um, and then you had that, you know, that situation with Dunk. And he was like, he was like, man, like, I don't know what happened. He was like, because we had cats like Dunk. We had Joe Blow. Yeah. And then, you know, like, stuff happens to where, you know, like, cats get locked up. You have an uh, unfortunate situation that happened, like I said, with Dunk. And then, like, for that moment, it felt like the industry kind of, like, fell back. Yeah. When it came to, like, looking at Charlotte. Yeah. And it just started to pick back up momentum. Really because of what I tell people. You had, you know, we, we say Arnold Taylor, but, like, shout out to, like, the people that's a part of that movement as well. What, what a King Carter, people that's from the city. Yeah. And was like, we got to start doing this stuff our own. You know, shout out to Sporty Ordy. You know, that's, that's, it was just like a part of his. Sporty Ordy. <laughs> Sporty Ordy been in the game. He been out here for a long, long time, time, bro. bro. I remember promoter. being a kid going to like events like the Breakfast Club. All you heard was his name, bro. Like yeah. him, I don't know if you remember, uh, what's my man that used to throw the, uh, the show? Nah, he was chunky, dark skin or brown skin. Uh, he used to throw the team parties. Mm. I don't know. I can't. Me remember. and my homie was just talking about him because he disappeared, bro. I wonder what happened to him. But like him, Sporty Odie was really like the key to the city with the with the with the parties and all that. Yeah, shit. yeah. and you see his transition. Yeah, I mean, now like Sporty Odie went from that from promoter to you know he's he's touching many things. Real estate. He he's partnered with Carter in another label. Yeah, to where you know that's where they got like Hot Bass Shack on and. You know what they're doing there, like it's Lil it's John, dope. yeah, yeah. Lil John, four K. It's like, but that's that's going to city. school, huh? That's, that's what's yeah. up. But that's yeah. that's city, that's city where it's like we got to start doing this ourselves. Then if the energy, if the industry gonna try to do us like that, then let's make our own industry. Thanks. And so it, it's dope to see that to where it's like now we'll get the attention because we um we're trying to master P this thing. Thanks. And so sometimes you got to do that as well. If you're not getting those opportunities, you got to make your own, man. That's a fact, man. That's a fact. Hell of a feeling. Hey, Emma, can't explain the feeling, the hell of a feeling. The young nigga ran up and did and made it to millions. Young nigga straight up the trenches, destined to get it. Young nigga steady finessing and search for a ticket. Damn, I can't explain the feeling, the hell of a feeling. The young nigga ran up and did and made it to millions. It's dope. It's dope to see. I feel like it's bubbling over when it comes yeah. to like Charlotte. Um, Will it get to like how Atlanta is? I think it'll take more time than that. I think it'll take you know about half a decade to get like that where, yeah. It's, yeah. where it's many stars. Yeah, because Atlanta TV, Atlanta TV is really sunk in the game. Like mm -hmm. Atlanta really been up there in the music scene since the eighties. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. Like before the before the rappers even start really buzzing from Atlanta, Anita Baker, the, yeah. The, the, you had R&B singers like Anita. Tony you had Braxton. Exactly. And then producers. Like, Babyface. I mean, like, he wasn't from there, but he... he he's, he's embedded there. Like, yeah. the R&B sound was really in Atlanta. TLC. Had, all of them, bro. Jermaine Dupri. Jermaine Dupri, a lot of people don't know. Jermaine Dupri was producing and writing for so many people early on. Mm -hmm. Like, even that song, uh, one of the most popular songs ever coming out of Texas. Um... Uh, uh, by DJ Screw. That's his beat. Mm. That's Jermaine Dupree beat. Nobody don't nobody know that though. But I didn't know that. Yeah, a good song. yeah, that's his beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's why Atlanta is like everybody think this is just like an overnight thing. But they've been uh, doing this. People been, who really know like that's close. Like, cause like I said, we're like the the cousin of Atlanta. Yeah. So people yeah. who's in the South, 
know the history of Atlanta. Yeah. And know yep. that that wasn't that overnight thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there's yeah. years like like Jermaine Dupree talks about that where he went up to New York and it was hated on. Yeah. You know, he went through that. He went through that source of what Andre 3000 was talking about. Like, the South got something to say. Like, Facts. it was a time, yeah, it wasn't running stuff. Facts. Like, throughout time, it was staying consistent. It got to the point that it is now. That's a fact, so, bro. That's what everything, though. If, if anything, the story of Atlanta should show people that it could happen. Consistency, again, bro, like, that's all it be. Mm -hmm. That's all it be, bro, that consistency. And yeah. That, yeah. That camaraderie, going back to what we were talking about earlier, like, it's... It's untouchable, bro. Like, and they, Atlanta's, the music scene is never going nowhere. Mm -hmm. It'll never go nowhere because of the work they done put in, the amount of talent they done produced and brought up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah, that's, I feel like Charlotte can do it, though. But yeah, like you said, it's going to take time. Yeah. It's definitely going to take time. Yeah. Time, like you said, putting the egos to side and knowing your position. Like, being, if, if you're going to be the manager, be the manager. Yeah. If if you're going to be the artist, be the artist. Yeah. You know, um, knowing your position, be proud of your position. If you're a role player, be a role player. Because sometimes that that be the case a lot that yeah. I've noticed. Like some people, they may be a role player, but have the mind frame that they really want to be a star. Facts. Where they're working under a star, and then there's contradiction there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If you if you're trying to build this foundation, because a star is being built based off of a team. Facts. And if you're somebody that's thinking you yourself as a star then you need to make your own team. Facts. Some people be like, it'd be some situations like that. Yep. It's like, we're going to do this. Let's, let's, if this is the train, let's stay on this train. Facts. But if you're not on the train, then make your own train. Make your That's own lane. Fact. Do your own thing. Sometimes it's that. Like, people just um, don't know what position they want to be in yet. Or, you know, they, and, and it ain't nothing wrong with being multitasking, like having many hats, but like getting on wise. Yep. Like, if you're going to do that, then do that, you know. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing as well. Doing your position, knowing your position and doing it right. Facts. You know? And giving it, you know, consistent, staying 100%, 110% in what Facts. you're doing. You know? Facts. And um, I feel like we'll get to, like I said, in the next half a decade, um, maybe a little bit longer, superstars where it's many of them, many yep. camps. Yep. You know, it's already getting to that level, but superstar-wise, I think we'll get there. Yeah. Um, I think I think Charlotte will too, honestly, bro. Mm -hmm. The talent, bro. The talent is here, bro. Like, yeah. By that time, you'll be a superstar, so you'll always come, you'll <laughs> come back. <laughs> you'll, you'll show love to the stars, and you know, do what you do. As of late, will be as of late. You That's know? a fact. I'll, I'll do what I, the best that I'll do because, like, I'm on a I'm on a one track mind. He know that. You know, I'm looking past the city. I'm trying to build this as a brand. Yeah. And no matter how big, God willing, it would get. It's always gonna be coming back and, and putting underground local acts and whether whether they be MCs or or um, you know dag on singers, artists, um, painters. Like my thing is just giving a light to people um, that are dope Facts. that don't have that light on them. And so that's a fact. That's that's a, when you have the right people doing that in position, that'll help the city grow as well. Facts. You know? Those people, once they're in position, they open a floodgate for the right people. Because sometimes people in positions don't do that. Like, that'll be the case as well. Yeah. Going back to what we were talking about earlier, holding nuts. Yeah. It a lot of, that's one That's one problem I can say about Charlotte that they don't have. Like, you got people that get on, and when they do get on, it's no helping nobody out. It's really like for bragging rights. It's like a, a I made it before you, and then a boo boo type thing. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, look at y'all, y'all still in the same position. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I'm elevating, y'all stuck. It's that type of thing. Instead of saying like, all right, all right, let me, you know what I'm saying you've been grinding for a minute, your work acted crazy, you, you talented, bro. Come on, bro. I see what you're doing. Let, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. You know what I'm saying like we're gonna do this together. It could be so much easier, but ego, pride, um. But I think with time, I think with time it'll get better though, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, if they wanted to grow. <laughs> yeah, if they, if they wanted to grow. If they really yeah. wanted to grow, it's, it's going to have to get better. Yeah. You know? And we're seeing that, like I said, it's just one step at a time, man. Thanks. One step at a time. It's, it's, it's plenty of cats that are doing it in the right direction. Shout out to the, the people that's moving the right way. They know who they are. I ain't going to name a bunch of people. But Question for you, real quick. Mm -hmm. Give me your top three rappers. Out of Charlotte right now, 
in your top three R&B singers out of Charlotte right now? Oh, okay. <laughs> and you, you listen to alternative music? I do. Cause I, I ain't gonna lie, that's I, I listen to everything. I listen to alternative. I listen to country. I listen anything yeah, you think of. Too. I'm a fucking rock star. So I right, give me gospel, and give me right. one of your 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 favorite alternative music artists out of Charlotte right now too. Oh man, okay. So we'll we'll do we'll do rappers and then I'll just do artists. I right, right? bet Top that's a artist as a whole. Where it be could be R and B could be alternative, a mixture of fusion because it's a lot of fusion going on right Facts. now. Um, so rapper wise. Um, to, you gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't nobody take this the wrong way, man. You know what I'm saying? This is no what's coming off right, right top. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right now, if we talking like hottest when it comes to moving, I would put um, Fetty P's up there for sure. Fetty yeah. Fetty P is just he's just he's he's one step away. Like he's just cons- when it talks consistency. His voice, like everything about Fetty, like you see, I'm just getting happy yeah, to talk yeah, about him. Yeah. But Fetty P, man, like just to see, and and he really, I mean, of course, he's probably like you have had that talent in him for a while, but he really just started like not that long, yeah, like yeah. really taking it to the level of serious, yeah. some half a decade, really. And so in that time span of what he's been doing, I would say Fetty P, um, and then oh man, I ain't gonna name none of, I ain't gonna name none of like. Like what I put like Mount Rushmore, it's like Moots or like Ferrars because they're already solidified. Yeah, man. This, like I'm yeah, not they, I'm not gonna yeah. name people like that because like they're I, I'm gonna name people that though the nation may not know yeah. as a whole, like a, like like nationally. Um so I'll put Fetty P. Um Oh man. I wanna put I'm, I mean Southside Ghost. I listen, I listen, I listen to Southside Ghost a lot. He hard. I actually learned about him from uh, Eric Lottery and uh, that's another hard one. What's my boy my name? Wales. Uh, Rice. Rice. Okay, Primo. Primo. Yeah, shout out to Primo. My marketing. He about to be on a second leg tour with him. For real? Mm-hmm. I think I seen it. I mm-hmm. seen it. So somebody I was I, I've been working with lately helped him with you know what I'm saying his tour and all of that stuff. Primo? Yeah, that's Primo. So that's when I found out about him. That's when I found out about Ghost. I'm like, fuck this nigga dope as fuck. Yeah. That's when I found out about Eric. Um actually I just reached out to him not too long ago. We was chopping it up about some. Yeah, he was um, we gotta have yeah. him on here. Yeah. Man, that's tough man. Like lots too. Like lot like, he might he may be on the other list. Cause lots like you. He yeah. has he he can go into a lot of different lanes. Um, from R and B to to rapping, but that that may be the the total artist one that I might put him in. Yeah. But Ghost for sure, in the, in the sense of just potential, um, finding he's been rapping for a minute, and I feel like the past like as I told him like half a decade, he's really um, just been in his bag, just right. knowing what to rap on. Like he's, you know, he just put the jacket on. Yeah. He's comfortable because you know it takes you a while to get comfortable with That's your voice and really knowing what sound good, get your flow right. His flow is right. He's yeah. he's got the people like that's believing in him going on these tours with like Primo Rice. He's it really for him is just meeting the right people because like he's one step away as well. Nice. Um, that can be national. Like he can make I can put him on a hit. He can make a hit. Um, he can talk about that real. Like he's he he's. Like I said, like Fetty P, he can talk about some real stuff where he'd be like, dang, like some heart throbbing type of music. Yeah. And then he can he can give you that that club stuff if you wanted to give you that. And so I put him there and then let's, let's try a young dude, because these dudes are a little bit older. I mean, I'm trying to think of somebody that's younger that's doing their thing. Super right young. Now. You know Lil Richie? Uh I think I do know Lil Richie. He been going crazy, bro. He consistent as hell. Younger dudes, younger dudes, that's doing it. I mean, black, black. Dang, I don't know. That's that's tough. My boy Black Phoenix be doing his thing. Younger dude. Uh, shout out to them. Shout out to him. Uh, dang, he he a younger dude. That's tough, man. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot. But if I had to do the three, I think right now. I would do Fetty, Southside, and then I'm trying to think. Uh, why you Why you ask me this, man? This, 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 he about took about ten minutes asking me this. <laughs> <laughs> took, how much time I got left now? Five, dang. 
<laughs> you about to about to the face. There you go. We'll we'll just for the sake of for the sake of time, I'll throw I'll throw Mavi in there. Okay. Like even though Mavi is solid, like he's 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 pushing hard. Like Mavi is like twenty three. Yeah. Like I like what Mavi. I like Mavi in the sense of I feel like he studied the people that came before him. And you know who Mavi is? Like Mavi. I brought like, him, I, I seen some of his stuff like one time, bro. Yeah. But I ain't really tapped into him like that. Yeah. I think like that's another dude I would like to have on the podcast because he's very I feel like mature for his age. He ain't nothing but probably like maybe 22, 23. And like he he gets it. Like yep. I feel like, oh man, then I'm like, you know, Ruben Vincent. Like Rube. But Rube, like, those guys are actually still yeah. like he got guru with him. Like yeah. these still these are people Mavi got people as well though. So I'll just throw Mavi in there for the sake of argument because, like, um, you know, he's young and I like the direction of his camp and how they're pushing that. And he's he's a star in what he do. Like, I can see Mavi, like, on Kimmel, like, down the line or Thanks. something like that. Um, so that's the three. That's the three. When it, Now, when it comes to a total artist or, like, an alternative fusion artist, um, I'll put I'll put um, I'll put Devin in there. I put Devin. Shout out to Devin. Um, he's been doing, making a lot of noise lately. He, um, like, he's been on Lute's album. He's come out with his own album, Saint Lute. That, um, you know, he he can he can jump in many different lanes. Bet. He's like R and B. He can do alternative. Um, he can do like Afro beat. Like he he's someone where I can see his artistry can jump in different okay. things. And so I'll I'll say Devin. I'll say lot, man. Yeah. Like lot, like lot can jump into a lot of different lanes as well. Like he did, like in a sense with you, like for for you, like, and that's something I want to talk to after this. Like R and B wise, like he got into an R and B bag. Yeah, it's like a lot of people wasn't expecting that, and he did it well. Yeah, um, a lot of people jump into bags, but they don't jump into that bag well. Thanks. Nice. And so, um, like your stuff, I was listening to it for for you. It reminded me, I was listening to one song. I was like, man, this is like. He kind of is entwining with like, it's almost like I don't know why it gave me like an eight oh eight and heartbreak type of feel for for it to be like short and sweet. But I was like, man, like it's giving me that kind of vibe. I'm gonna play some shit for you after this. Well, I can't wait to hear. But like, salute to that project because that's a dope project, Mm -hmm. and I see what you were doing with that. But um, lot dev and um, do I those? I don't know, Sianka. Sianka, you know Sianka. I don't. I feel like I feel like y'all would be a good collab. Like, and honestly, some of the artists that I don't know that you're talking about, man, send me all that stuff, yeah. bro. Like, cause she's she's like she. I think she's originally from like maybe like nine one nine area, which I think that's like Raleigh Durham area. But she's been in Charlotte for a minute. She's okay. North Carolina native. Um, but I would, you know, hey, that's tough. Like all around artists like that though, but yeah, lot dev, um, hmm. It's, I'm telling you, bro, it's a lot of stars out here right now. Thanks. Bro. Stars is aligning. Thanks. But for the sake of time, I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I guess I'll throw it. It's so many alternative type cats too. Yeah, I guess I'll throw her. Yeah, so I go for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause she's like R and B soul type. Like she got a vibe. Yeah, I'm gonna check her out for sure. Hines, for sure. Jax Hines. You ever heard of him? Hell yeah. yeah he's been making a lot of money. Fine, you fly. What? Yeah. yeah. I think he's. Yeah. I think cause now that he's signed to like, which that song was a hit. Yeah. Shout out to mm-hmm. that. But I think when you have these songs, it comes back to the backing. I think now that he's backed by Anthony Hamilton, um, I see good things for him. Out of here. He yeah. gonna be I out. think he about yeah. to be out of here. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, for the sake of time, I'll, I'll say those people. But shout out to all the people in Charlotte that's doing their thing and staying consistent because all of y'all are so dope in what y'all do. Um, it's a lot of superstars out here. You guys just got to stay consistent. You know, y'all, y'all making somebody that, that a native like myself proud to see because we done came a long way. It came a long way as a city. That's a know. fact, bro. But um, for you, we want to. I want to talk about for you, um, because we how much time? How much time I got, KB? Like, zero time. <laughs> 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 but let's let's end with for you, Bet. because that was something that surprised me, but didn't at the sense because 
um, you were naturally even in the, the previous like projects like Underdog, you would give us those vibes for yeah, the women. Yeah. But this just seems like more of not of like the see you at the club type. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, more yeah. like really dedicated to yeah. letting you know I can talk that kind of talk yeah. if I want to. Just just give people for somebody like myself who may not have listened to the project yet. Why should I listen to for you? I mean, all right. So for you, really, like, first off, for you is really like real life, um, real life events. Everything you gonna hear in there is really like real feelings. Um, that type of that project is basically just me stepping out, just giving people a snippet of, just showing people like, bro, like, not only can I rap, but I can literally do everything. I got rock songs, bro, like with real deal guitars. A real band playing behind it. I got country music. I can literally write anything, and I can really make music music. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I just want to come out rapping just to show people, like, the art of rapping is not dead. That's yeah. You know what I'm saying? Facts. But now I'm about to get in my bag and really show people, like, my artistry. So For You was basically just an introduction to that and an introduction to, to the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Like, because... I'm an artist who got like a certain sex appeal. Mm. No matter where I go, all my shows. I told always, you that lane. Yeah, like you, you know what I'm saying. Got the, you got the lane. Yeah, it's always a lot of women at my shows and stuff mm. like that. Um, Definitely need to start coming to those shows then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. And they naturally like gravitate to me, and I. Mm. It's one of the things where I be like, man, like, I don't really be putting out a lot of music for y'all, and y'all, my biggest fan base. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, if I go on my my. Spotify, iTunes, music, or whatever, and it show you the statistics for everything. Mm. I got the last project I did, Underdog did what? Almost three hundred thousand streams. Word. Out of that, probably like seventy. I think it's like seventy two or seventy three percent is women mm. listeners. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm. I gotta, I gotta give y'all more of me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And even though I've been sitting on it. It's like now it's now it's time. Now it's time for me to really like embrace that side of me. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I feel like a lot of artists, especially rappers, they're afraid to embrace real life. They're afraid to embrace love. They're afraid to yeah. embrace women. You know what I'm saying? With their feelings. Mm-hmm. Most of us just you know they what can saying? make them feel um, yeah weak. Yeah, you know? they yeah. think doing that make them feel. Weak. Yeah, and a lot of us, like, it's either when we talk about them, we, you know how we talking about them, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. That's that's our way of embracing them, you know what I'm saying? My thing is, like, if you look at, even if you look at an artist like Drake, the reason why why he win is because he embraced that vulnerability. Mm-hmm. He's not afraid to talk about heartbreak. He's not afraid to talk about, he's not afraid to step away from the macho man side, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I'm one of them artists. Like, I'm not afraid of that. Like, speaking on Black Sheep, Black Sheep is the same way. Like, certain things I touched on Black Sheep one and two, that's like other people wouldn't talk on it and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's that's how that's what For You is about. For You is just giving them a snippet of me, my feelings, my vulnerability, love. Like, the song Maybe. Maybe going crazy right now. Maybe got like I told you that's the one. Yeah, maybe got over thirty thousand streams. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, already, and it ain't been nothing but a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah, that's not surprising. Yeah, and like that song maybe was real. Mm-hmm. Like that's real questions that I'm I'm at, I was asking my lady at the time. Like maybe it got to be this because we come from two different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. So maybe I am too 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 rough for you. Maybe I am too rough around the edges for you. Maybe I am too much of maybe my environment consume me too much and you can't you're not able to consume what I'm trying to feed you at this moment or you can't because we just not gonna see eye to eye at this at this moment because we come from two different backgrounds like I said yeah so that was that's what that that's what that was about um um FWM basically the same thing like it's like all right now we in this limbo we in the limbo of do we want to be together? Do we not? But if we don't, you got to stop playing with my emotions because that's how I was truly feeling at the time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Shout out Jumanji. Um, uh, feel About You. Feel About You is just a super feel-good song. Um, kind of got that, that island vibe to it or whatever. But even that song is like, 
kind of touching on touching on both as far as like all right yeah we doing our thing yeah we sexing on each other and all of that but i need you to be real and tell me what you really want you know what i'm saying like yeah. Our emotions is tied up in this. You know what I'm saying? We've been together for years. Like, we've been rocking with each other since we was jits. Yeah. That's the one where I got the, like, the 808 vibe as well. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. That's and the one where I got that vibe. Even the intro, Waffle House. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that's just, like, some random skit. That's real. That's a real deal. That came from a real, you know what I'm saying? Like I figured it was. Yeah, that, that was real. That was something authentic. And that's what I pride myself on, like, being that authentic artist, being that authentic person, and giving people my, my true feelings. And what I'm really going through, what I really have experienced. So, so. dope, dope, yes, beautiful. That's and that's something you guys need to stream if you haven't already. Check out for you. Um, it was a well put together project. Um, Tony, was great, bro. I appreciate you, Dad, on coming on. Appreciate as a you, dog. It's been for good real, to man. connect with you. Yeah. Um, you know, talk to you face to face outside of DMs. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and real recognize real, bro. You know, I'm rooting for you, bro. You know, I'm pulling for you. Pull for the real ones, bro. Um, give people your socials, ways to get in contact with yeah. you to stream your music before you get out of here. All uh, right, Instagram, Tonio, T O N I O underscore the great, T H E G R E A T. Uh, Twitter, Tonio the great 11. Um, uh, all other platforms, um, Apple, Spotify, all of that. It's just Tonio the great, um, spelled correctly, T O N I O, T H E G R E A T. Um, I got a couple projects on there from this year. Undefeated, Underdog, uh, For You. Um, and I got some actually dropping before the end of this year. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I love the grind, bro. Keep going, bro. Yo, appreciate that, that, man. This is As of Late.